This video is a follow-up video of the Mailman Problem Part 1. So if you didn't have the opportunity to watch the part 1, I will recommend you to watch it on the link above. In the previous video, we were identifying the total number of paths of the Mailman Problem, the path of minimum length, what was the size of this minimum length, and how many paths were having a minimum length. In this new video, we are going to study the path of maximum length. What is this maximum length equal to? And how many paths have a maximum length? Now, let's talk about the path of maximum length. And the first step is to identify what is this maximum length equal to. So, to answer that question, what we are going to do is to represent this mi number on a graph. So, on the x-axis, we are going to represent the steps i that goes from 0 to n. And on the y-axis, we are going to represent the value mi, which is the uh, house number that the mailman is visiting. So we know that in the step number 0, we are visiting the house number 1. And all the way to the step number n, we are visiting the house number 1 again. And in between the two steps, the mailman is going to visit all of the house between 2 and n. And what we're going to do here is to define the number L1 that is equal to 0, and we note H1 as the first local maximum after L1, and L2, the first local minimum after H1, etc., up to HK, the last local maximum before the last step, and the step n being equal to the step lk plus 1. And the reason why we are doing that is because we are identifying portion of the path where mi is increasing between li and hi, and mi will be decreasing between hi and li plus 1. And thanks to that, we can rewrite the length of a path the following way. So Lm is equal to the sum from i equal 1 to n of mi minus mi minus 1, which is equal to m h1 minus m l1 plus m h1 minus m l2 plus m h2 minus m l2 plus etc. plus m h k minus m l k plus m h k minus m l k plus 1. And the reason why we can write this is because we know that the mailman is going to go from m l1 to m h1. So it doesn't matter what are the intermediary paths in between, the total distance between mh1 and ml1 is equal to mh1 minus ml1. And then when the mailman is decreasing in the rank of the house to go to the house ml2, we know that the distance is mh1 to uh, minus ml2, etc., etc. Now, we note as well that ml1, which is basically m0, is equal to 1, and mlk plus 1, which is equal to mn, is also equal to 1. So we basically have ml1, which is equal to mlk plus 1. And now what we're going to notice is that each element mhi and mli appears in this sum exactly two times. So you can see mh1 here, mh1 there, ml1 here, mlk plus 1, which is the same there. Then we have ml2 here, ml2 there, etc, etc. So you can perfectly write this sum as being equal to 2 multiplied by mh1 plus mh2 plus etc plus m h k minus 2 multiplied by m l1 which is equal to 1 plus m l2 plus etc up to m l k and we can also write this sum as 2 multiplied by m 
H1 minus M L1 plus M H2 minus M L2 plus etc. plus M HK minus M LK. Now let's think about the biggest distance that the mailman can walk between ML1 and MH1. So the biggest distance is if ML1, that we know which is equal to 1, is if he goes all the way to the house uh, number n. So this part is lower or equal to n minus 1. And once this distance has been achieved, which means that the mailman started at the house number one and went all the way to the house number n, this house have already been visited. So the biggest distance that the mailman can walk after having walked this distance n minus one is basically to go between the house number two to the house number n minus one. And this distance between the two is equal to n minus three etc etc up to n minus 2k plus 1. So in other words, this distance is lower or equal to 2 multiplied by n minus 1 plus n minus 3 plus etc plus n minus 2k plus 1. We can rewrite this as the sum from p equal 1 to k of n minus 2p plus 1, which is equal to 2 multiplied by k n plus 1 minus 2 sum from p equal 1 to k of p, which is equal to 2 k n plus 1 minus 2 k k plus 1 divided by 2. So we know that the sum from p equal 1 to k of p is equal to k k plus 1 divided by 2. So this is equal to 2k n plus 1 minus k minus 1. So we can discard this element. And this total distance is equal to 2k multiplied by n minus k. So the problem that we're having here is that this formula does not only depend on the number n, we also have the number k that appear here. And this number k basically represents the number of local maxima in the uh, series mi. But we would really like to have a maximum value that only depends on the number n. So to identify that, what we can do is to identify the maximum value of that number, whatever the value of k is. And one way to identify that is to uh, analyze the function that turns x into x multiplied by n minus x and to identify its maximum. So we can identify the maximum of this function by taking its derivative. And we know that uh, we are reaching the local maximum when the derivative is equal to zero, which is equivalent to have n minus 2x equal to zero, which is equivalent to have x is equal to n divided by 2. So this is valid if x is a real number, but the problem is that k here has to be an integer. So if n is even, this works. We can take the maximum is rich in n divided by 2. But if n is odd, then the maximum will actually be reached in k is equal to the floor of n divided by 2. In other words, the length of any path is lower or equal to 2 floor of n divided by 2 multiplied by n minus n divided by 2 floor. And I'm not going to go into detail here because the calculations are a bit burdensome, but you can show that this is exactly equal to the floor of n squared divided by 2. So now what we're going to see is a specific path where we can reach this maximum. And one way to reach this maximum is to have h1 that is equal to 1, l2 that is equal to 2, h2 that is equal to 3, l3 that is equal to 4, etc. And the value that we are going to choose for each of these indices is to have 
m h1 that is equal to m m l2 that is equal to 2 m h2 that is equal to n minus 1 m l3 that is equal to 3 etc etc and in the last step we're having m h k that is equal to n minus k m l k that is equal to k and m l k plus 1 that is equal to 1 and as you remember a house cannot be visited more than once so necessarily we need to have m h k that is strictly greater than m l k so we must have n minus k that is greater or equal to k plus 1 so in other word n minus 2k minus 1 that is greater than 0 which is equivalent to say that k is that is lower than n minus 1 divided by 2 and we can show that if we are following that path then the total length of that path will be exactly equal to the floor of n square divided by 2. So visually what this path look like is a lot of back and forth between the houses at the extreme right and at the extreme left where we try to reach the most extreme house and then take the most extreme right and left house that are left available. So it will look something like this. And then we will go back to the house number one here. So as we have just seen above the maximum length of any path that the mailman can take is exactly equal to n squared divided by 2. And now what we are going to see is what is the number of paths that are maximal in length. Let's remember that the length of a path can be written as 2 mh1 plus mh2 plus etc plus mhk minus 2 ml1 plus ml2 plus etc plus mlk. And what we can note is that according to this sum, it does not really matter how we arrange the mh1, mh2, mhk. What matters is that here we have the most extreme right, and I put right between quote, so the houses that are the closest to the house number uh, n. So we have the most extreme right houses here. And on that side of this quantity, we have the house that are the closest to the house number one, so the most left house in this quantity. But really, what we have to understand is that it doesn't really matter how we arrange this uh, number mh1, mh2, mhk, and how we arrange this number either. So let's study an example with uh, a number n that will be odd and even to see exactly what's happening. So let's take n is equal to 6, and one possible path of maximum length will be 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 4, and 1. And what we can see here is that we are increasing from 1 to 6, then decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing again, and finally decreasing. So the h value are the 6, 5, and 4, and the low value l are the 2 and 3. Let's calculate the length of this path. So from 1 to 6, we move 5. From 6 to 2, we have 4. 2 to 5, we have 3. 5 to 3, we have 2. 3 to 4, 1. And finally, 3. So by doing the sum of all of these intermediary distance, we have a length that is equal to 5 plus 4, 9, plus 3, 12, plus 2, 14, 1 and 4, 18. But we can perfectly take this alternative path, which is 1, 5, 3, 6, 2, 4, 1. And what you can see here is that we have rearranged the high value 6 and 6 
there, 5 and 5 there. We didn't change the position of the high value 4, and we have also changed the position of the low value 2 and 3, where we put 2 here and 3 there. And if we recalculate the length of this path, we have 4 plus 2, so this is equal to 6, plus 3, which is equal to 9, plus 4, which is equal to 13, plus 2, which is equal to 15, plus 3, which is equal to 18. So we still have the same length of exactly 18. And note as well that we verify that 18 is equal to 6 squared divided by 2, which is 36 divided by 2. So what you can see with this example of n equal to 6 is that there is exactly three factorial ways to arrange the high value, and there is exactly two factorial way to arrange the L value. Now let's take the example of n as an odd number, so n is equal to 5, and we are going to take a maximal path which is 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, and 1. So the high value here are again 5, and then 4, and then the low value are 2 and 3. And I shouldn't exactly say that 3 is a low value, because if you see the difference between the case where n is even and n is odd is that here the high value are clear in the case n equal to 6, because we have nh that belongs to 6, 5, and 4, so we have exactly three value, and for the ML, we have the value 1, 2, and 3. And we have the exact same number of uh, high and low value, so 3 in each case. But in the case where n is odd, it's a bit more complicated than that, because we have MH that belongs to 5, 4, and 3, and the low value that are 1, 2 and 3. And we cannot really have a 3 that belongs to both the high and low value. So 3 is a bit of an outcast that shouldn't belong to any of the high or low value here. So the consequence of this is that really the number 3, we can basically put it wherever we want. It's not going to change the number of back and forth uh, that we are doing in this path. And we can see this by taking, for example, the path where we have 1, 5, 3, 2, 4, and 1. So what we have done here is that the number 3, we moved it basically like in the middle. And if you compare the number of increasing path and decreasing path, here you have 1 increasing path, 2 increasing path, and 1 decreasing path, and 2 decreasing path. And here, you can see that you increase from 1 to 5, you decrease globally from 5, 3, 2, increase again, and decrease again. So we basically have the same number of increasing and decreasing path, and it doesn't really matter where we put this number 3. But apart from that, uh, the same rule that we have seen here apply here as well. So we have two factorial ways to arrange the h value, and two factorial ways to arrange the L value, because as we have seen here, we really have only two value for the low value and two value for the high value here. And notice that this value 2 is basically equal to uh, the floor of n divided by 2, so the floor of 2.5, and we have the same thing here, 2 is equal to the floor of n divided by 2, and here we have 3 that is equal to uh, the floor of n divided by 2. Sorry, actually for L, since the number 1, we cannot really change uh, its position, we have actually one factorial ways to arrange the L. The L value that we can change is only this number 2 here, because the 1, as we said, like we cannot really touch it. So at the end, the number of options for h is equal to 2 factorial, with 2 that is equal to uh, the floor of n divided by 2, and 1 is equal to the floor of n divided by 2 minus 1. 
And here as well, we have a three that is equal to the floor of n divided by two, and two that is equal to the floor of n divided by two minus one. So whether n is an odd or an even number, we have floor of n divided by two factorial ways to arrange the h value, the high value, and we have floor of n divided by two minus one factorial ways to arrange the real low value L. And on top of that, what we have seen is that when n is an odd number, we have this kind of intermediary value 3 that is exactly equal to n plus 1 divided by 2. So when n is odd, this kind of middle number can be really put wherever we want, in n minus 1 different position, and that multiply the number of possibility to arrange this maximal path by n minus 1. So at the end, the number of maximal path is equal to n minus 1 to the power of n modulo 2 multiplied by the floor of n divided by 2 factorial multiplied by the floor of n divided by 2 minus 1 factorial. And the reason why we are writing that is because if n is an odd number, n mod 2 will be equal to 1, and if n is an even number, n mod 2 will be equal to 0. And that means that when n is even, this part will be equal to 1, and when n is an odd number, this will be equal to n minus 1. So this is the total number of maximal path.